What sex tip do you think everyone should know? Women. Sometimes guys can't perform. They have no idea why. Probably some experts can tell you but he isn't an expert. You can help by being understanding and comforting. And be willing to delay the action. He'll be more likely to be ready in the morning if he can't do it that night. Agree. And to add to that, no, it's probably nothing to do with you. Stress. Depression. Frustration. Something shiny. Literally anything can make the dingle dangle instead of dongle. And yeah, it's f annoying, frustrating, and embarrassing for us when it happens too. If you're going to suck dick or eat pussy, act like it's your favorite thing in the world. Suck that dick and eat that pussy like it's the last time you'll ever do it. I don't know the intricacies of sucking dick because I'm a straight male, but for eating pussy don't rest your head on their thigh and lazily suck at it. Don't stay in one spot and just lick the clit. You need to cover everything down there. If your face isn't covered your own spit or their cum, you're doing it wrong. If your neck is in an uncomfortable position, but your girl is getting close to coming, suck it up and deal with your neck later. It's all about getting her that nut. Enthusiasm in all things sexual truly makes the experience better for all involved. Always have lube just in case. Dicks don't bend when hard, so try not to literally destroy it if you're riding one. If you're doing oral on a woman and she says keep doing what you're doing, do literally that same motion and speed. Don't speed up to try to make her come faster, that isn't how it works. If you're doing oral on a guy and I find this mostly in the case of women on men and once he comes, dicks become ridiculously sensitive. Unless he says he's into that, chill on it for a minute, nipple play cannot be overlooked. Nipples are extremely sensitive and very fun to mess around with. It can really get your partner going and even some guys are into it too. Of course, these are all dependent on each individual. But I wouldn't be surprised if these applied to a lot of people. You have to preheat the oven before you make cookies. Don't have sex like what you see on porn. It's not real life and those girls are paid. They're not being pleasured. If your partner is not absolutely stoked to have sex with you, do not pass go. Also, if you have body image problems, first of all, I'm sorry, it sucks. When you're with someone who wants to have sex with you, remember, they totally want to see you naked. They know how you look. They have a pretty good idea of what they'll find under your clothing, and they are looking forward to it. It is okay to not be in the mood for sex when your partner is. Although there are multiple contexts for this, I want to stress this to neurodiverse men, who often have to wrestle between being too overwhelmed for sex and a societal expectation that they should be wanting it 24-7. I am married and the self-loathing on those instances still creeps up on me. Be open to new things. If there is 1000 sex stuff and you like 5% of it, you still have 50 things to enjoy. Don't be stuck in your few Pornhub tactics. Ask her, him what they like. Tell them what you like. Sex isn't just sticking it wherever possible, it's communicating with your partner. Don't just give up when you come. This is a two-person job. Wash up thorough before and after unless you enjoy UTIs and smells that get stuck in sheets. Just. Keep clean. I mean, if we could just make a map of the vagina marking all the relevant areas and their uses and hand it out to whoever needed it, that'd be great. Don't squeeze the balls too hard, unless they ask you to. I remember hooking up with this one girl and we were making out on my bed, while she was giving me a hand job, then her other hand goes for my balls and I'm thinking she's going to massage them. For some reason she grabs on them with a death grip that almost made me fall off the bed in pain. I guess someone she was with really liked that. But I definitely did not. Big dick does not mean good dick. Just because your dick's smaller than what you see on Pornhub doesn't mean it's not going to be great sex. Just listen to your partner. Learn their sounds. Their desires. Seriously. Had sex with a guy that was massive and was in agony. My boyfriend is like half the size and it is the best sex. Do not let your boyfriend read this. He'll only see the first half of that last sentence. Go pee afterwards. UTIs are freaking painful. Kissing won't make babies. What about hand-holding? 
consent is mandatory. Ice play is probably a bad time, unless you use it sparingly. Electro stim is also best applied sparingly. Hot wax feels amazing, but it's a mess to clean up and it flakes and crumbles off your body. Worth it. Also, always make sure to use body safe hot wax candles. They have a lower melting point, so you don't wind up burning the ever living heck out of your partner. Leopard print is sexy. Do your prep work in advance, not afterward, when you're tired and sweaty. This means have fresh towels, have your cleanup supplies, etc., on hand and ready to go, not down the hall and in the linen closet. Stretch in advance. Sex is cardio, prep like it. Don't leave your submissive tied up for a long time. Don't leave your submissive unattended while tied up. Don't leave the freaking keys somewhere you can't easily get to then if you do get all locked up. You may need them quickly if there's an emergency. Velcro cuffs. Like sport cuffs. Or bondage tape. Which only sticks to itself. Life happens whether we expect it or not. Keep some spare clothes or a robe nearby so you can toss it on if needed. The fire department probably won't be phased by anything they see, but you probably don't want the neighbors talking about what you get up to in private. If you don't know how to do something safely, don't do it. Do your homework and your research when trying something new. Clip your f nails and file them neatly. Your partner will not have much fun if your nails are sharp and tearing along sensitive places. If biting someone or nibbling on something, always curl your lower lip over your bottom teeth. This provides a cushion and lets you know how much pressure you're applying so you don't bite too hard and hurt them. This also prevents you from biting someone in surprise when a pet jumps onto the bed. For example, don't be afraid to be creative sometimes. You can order almost anything you like on the internet, and no one there cares what you're ordering. So feel free to try that weird looking dildo with the enticing ridges, bumps, and scales. Use lube. Don't use a silicone-based lube with silicone toys. That is an expensive mistake that you will only make once. Use water-based lube instead. If you want to try something new, talk it out with your partner first. Consent is sexy. Being surprised with something a little too far beyond your comfort zone while mid-coitus is not. Establish a safe word and use it. Respect it. If someone calls a full stop, you stop. If you're doing anal, use lube. If you think you're using enough lube, you're not using enough lube. Use more lube. Get yourself tested between partners. Just in case. Discuss pubic hair with your partner. In advance. For as much as some people prefer au natural, there are also others who don't like getting your short in curlies in their teeth while giving oral. Not everyone tosses salad. And that's okay. Not all of your fetishes have to agree. And that's okay. 2. It's alright to experiment a little or do something solely because it makes your partner melt and make fun little noises. Even if it wouldn't normally be your cup of tea. Remember, you have a safe word and you can stop if you need it. If someone shares their fetishes with you, keep their secrets. Those are personal. Don't go blabbing about them in public. Aftercare is super important. After the sex, dedicate some cool downtime for snuggling, bonding, talking, sharing a snack, anything. If you feel up to it, talk about what worked and what didn't. Maybe talk about what you want to try next time. This is a good time to cement your bond together. Have some tea. Watch a cartoon. Cuddle. Clean your toys. And or change out your sheets so neither of you have to sleep in the sweaty spot. Don't fake an orgasm. They're not worth it. Proper pillow underneath her hips. Or even go at it standing up while she lays on the bed. Working for a slightly upward thrust trajectory. To hit some of those hard to reach spots. Life is not porn. People have different sexual chemistry. And sometimes it takes some time to figure the other person out. Dear recent male bloomers, please breath properly while having sex. Staying erect can be very stressful but keeping your breath is going to keep your little friend facing down. And I'm sure there are other people out there like me. Mind you, holding your breath just before and during orgasm can also feel really good. But breathing before that is necessary. Sex is cardio. After all, your body needs that oxygen. Lube is meant to be applied both inside and out. If you skip foreplay, slather her vulva in lube and try to stick it in. Congrats, it's not going to go in more than a cm because on the inside she is dry. Use your fingers, tongue, help her relax. 
Some of us are naturally dry even when we're horny, so lube on the fingers going inside is going to be very useful if you want painless sex. Just because you're getting no complaints about what you're doing, doesn't mean it's great. Ask your partner if there is anything you should do differently. Use Lou, even if you think you don't need Lou. Lock pets out of the room. You don't want to get surprised by your concerned dog barking at your partner. You're allowed to use things other than your genitals, and things other than your body. If you're unsure if your partner will be okay with it, ask. Keep clean sheets, new clothes, baby wipes and water bottles nearby for after. The worst after sex argument is who has to get the water since you're probably both exhausted and don't want to move. If you live with someone else, let them know ahead of time if you might be loud. Move your bed away from the wall. Turn the TV up or play music over a louder speaker than your phone. Put a sock on the doorknob. Or just ask if your roommates will run an errand while you do your thing. I used to ask them to go pick up pizza that I would pay for in exchange for their retrieval. Don't feel bad if you don't last a long time. Sometimes you just can't and that's okay. Don't shame your partner either. Don't be afraid to set the mood with lights, candles, music, etc. It's not weird or cliche. If what you're doing is getting boring, talk to your partner about trying new things. If you're ever not enjoying yourself 100% stop. I'm gonna f*** you. I'm gonna hump you. I'm gonna ball you discreetly. Go easy on clits. It's not a button on your PlayStation. 1000x this. Don't just f***ing start mashing it. It's annoying. Start with a light touch. The clit is a joystick, not a button. And your character needs to sneak over a narrow bridge. Most girls, including me, don't want hours of sex. 5 to 30 minutes is enough not always 3 hours. Whether it is hard or soft always depends on the shape of the day. Asking helps. Change things up now and then. Fast and aggressive is fun and all, but it makes that surprise slow and passionate much more enjoyable, and helps you and your partner keep from getting bored. Also, butt stuff. Don't do it if you're not prepared for a possible mess. Do it enough times and a mess will happen eventually. Don't panic. Just go take a shower. Pee afterward. Even if it's just a few drops. It'll help clear the urinary tract. And decrease the risk of UTIs. Don't rely entirely on the pull-out game. Use protection. The hole is lower. Don't stick it in mid-pussy. No means no. Foreplay and there is a reason they always say use protection. Sorry, I can't finish the reply. I have to help my kid. If you focus on controller breathing, you should last a lot longer and feel a lot more pleasure. What if I have a keyboard and mouse? I lost my controller's cable. Stick them with the pointy end. Men, your penis is not a magical orgasm giving device. Women need direct clitoral stimulation. A bit counterintuitive, but don't be too unselfish. Many of us out here mainly draw satisfaction from how much our partner is enjoying themselves. Even if you do something that's mainly for you, that's still hot as hell. And on the other side of the coin, being with someone who only cares about your pleasure can quickly get exhausting. Go get yours. Take your time and learn what your partner likes. Don't be embarrassed to talk with them about their likes, dislikes and also don't make them feel like shit if they have a kink you don't like. Suck on her nipples. Not too hard. Give them little nibbles. Give her casquillas. In English it means lightly brush your nails or fingers as lightly as possible over her skin. The lower back and rib cage are usually super sensitive. When you eat her out no matter how you start. Let her get comfy then run your tongue down the bottom of the vagina and make a seal with your mouth and give it little sucks while you flick your tongue around. Then increase the pressure of sucks till she loses it. Foreplay should last 15 to 30 minute if you're trying to make her head explode. Ask for nothing in that time. Just give. Your female partner should have already came. Or been very close by the time foreplay is over. Having sex is all about watching your partner's facial and physical reactions. You want them to look like they can't control their body. Like whatever you're doing to them has them so sexually aroused that they are now going limp. But still writhing around in pleasure. And when you do that to a girl. Good luck any other guy that wants to slide in the DMs. Nobody gonna hit that like I do. Don't take sex tips from Reddit. Having sex before you go out for the night is better than doing it at the end of a night with dinner. 
dancing etc., you're more into it, working up the appetite and can still have sex again later. Ask what your partner likes. Don't assume what works on one, works on another. Ask even though you think it's weird. You'll learn what your partner likes, and you'll probably get over the perceived weirdness pretty quickly. If you are with the same person over a stint of time, you won't have to ask. You'll know, and it's smoothing sailing. Just ask, either before things are hot and heavy, or during. If partner doesn't ask, tell them. Just simply be like, hey, I like it if you would kiss my neck. Or, if you get behind me and slam into my body I will squirt everywhere and we'll need to change sheets. But it'll be worth your while. Just ask. Make sure you're using the right hole. Please. No more nose jobs. Do not f write the alphabet with your tongue. That's distracting at least. The girl needs to concentrate on whatever you do. Every time you change anything she has to concentrate again and inevitably lose some progress. Start with long wide slow movements. Keep consistency in speed and pressure. If you know what feels better for her, you can be more direct and persistent. Only apply more pressure if you know where. Only speed up while becoming more gentle.